welcome to a new what I eat in a week. This was a week in December and I started it with baked oatmeal. I will link the base recipe below. And the recipe I will link has apples, but I'm making this with blueberries instead. I also added some hemp protein powder to this one, but otherwise it's pretty much the same recipe. So it contains a banana, rolled oats, ground flax seeds, hemp protein as I said, cinnamon, a pinch of sea salt, baking powder, and cardamom. And then for the liquid I had pea milk, but I forgot to mention that I wanted to try a gingerbread flavor, so I also added ground ginger and ground cloves. But since I didn't measure it, I just eyeball it. It didn't really taste like gingerbread, so yeah. But I blended everything together before pouring it into a baking dish and adding frozen blueberries. Then I baked it at 175 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. I topped it with hemp seeds and more pea milk and it doesn't really look nice when I have pea milk on top but it tastes really nice and that's the most important thing. I also opened my advent calendars and this one is with raw chocolate from a Swedish brand and this day it was licorice chocolate. In Sweden we eat salty licorice and it goes very well with chocolate. Non-Scandinavians probably don't agree though. <laughs> I also had a tea calendar and this day it was green tea which is perfect to have in the morning. And I always drink my advent calendar tea in my Christmas mug every year. Whoa, it feels like you just walked outside and saw the brightness. Yeah, for lunch I reheated a sweet potato, lentil and cauliflower stew. I have a recipe on my blog so I will link it below. I also reheated some quinoa with that. And when you reheat stews like this, you want to add a splash of water to re-moisture it, kind of. And to the plate, I added half of an avocado like usual. Avocados, or I mean healthy fats in general, helps with the absorption of beta carotene, so it's a really great food combination. Because, yeah, sweet potatoes have beta carotene, in case you didn't know. And I kind of wish I made more servings of this because it's really good and perfect to meal prep. For my snack, I had two gingerbread cookie dough bites that I made in another video, so I will link that video and the recipe below. I also had an apple. For dinner, I made minestrone soup and it was a plant-based one. I actually posted a recipe for this on my Instagram, I think last year or the year before. So that's what I used as my reference, except that I didn't have any celery and I was also too lazy to measure out the herbs and spices, so I just eyeballed it. But if you want to follow the recipe properly, I will link that as well. Anyways, it includes onion, garlic, zucchini, carrots, basil, oregano, thyme, herb salt, so many ingredients. It's actually not that many, it just sounds like many when you mention them. I also added two bay leaves, then I added crushed tomatoes and water, and one can of kidney beans for the protein. You want to let this cook for a short while before adding in the pasta. I used whole wheat pasta. And then I let that cook until the pasta was done. I also added a bit of salt and pepper. 
And right before the pasta was actually done, I added some frozen chopped kale. But you want to make sure that the kale is thawed before you actually serve the soup and everything. If you're using frozen kale, if you use fresh, then never mind. Before you serve it, you want to take out the bay leaves. And I was very lucky this day because both bay leaves were sticking together when I wanted to fish them out. So I caught them right away. I usually have to really look for them for a really long time. But yeah, this is such a hearty and comforting soup, which is perfect during the winter, so I highly recommend it. And if you want it to be more soupy, you can add more liquid, but don't forget to add more of the herbs and spices as well to not lose the flavor. I like it when it's not too watery. Anyways, I ate this with two rye crisp breads, and one of them had hummus and the other had mashed avocado on top and herb salt, and then both of them had nutritional yeast as well. On Tuesday, I had my regular oatmeal that you've seen me make a thousand times, and I topped it with cinnamon, hemp seeds, and frozen blueberries. Even though the hemp seeds I get are shelled, they still contain shells, and I get disgusted when I bite into food and it has a texture it's not supposed to have, so yeah, I try to remove the shells that I see. I also have green tea most mornings, but I don't film it because it feels too repetitive. But this day I had one cup in the morning and then one like during the early day. I also had a banana in the morning. For lunch, I reheated the leftover soup and it was a really large portion. So I only had one crisp bread this time. I was super full between lunch and dinner, so I didn't have a snack, but for dinner I just roasted some vegetables in the oven, so I had carrots, zucchini, and broccoli. I know I said I just roasted vegetables, but obviously I did not only eat vegetables as you will see, so keep on watching. <laughs> I seasoned them with salt, pepper, dried oregano, and dried rosemary. I also wanted to roast chickpeas and I seasoned them with salt, paprika, ground cumin and dried oregano. By the way, I feel like I have to address the lighting in every video because I'm so embarrassed, but it's the winter time. I just, I, I hate this lighting I'm, and I'm sorry, but I, I can't really do anything about it. But I still want to make videos, so yeah. Anyways, I roasted everything for about 30 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius, but I kind of had another setting on the oven though, so the broccoli and zucchini became a bit mushy, which uh, they usually don't get when I cook them like this, but with a normal setting. Anyways, while that was in the oven, I made a tahini dressing, so I added lemon juice, and a tablespoon of tahini as the base, sort of, and then I added too much sea salt and some garlic powder. I whisked it until it got thick, and then I gradually added water until I got it to the desired consistency. And because it looks so thick, you may find the urge to add a lot of water, but really add just a little at a time because otherwise there's a risk that it will become too watery. I served everything with some quinoa and unlike the vegetables, the chickpeas were perfectly roasted. You can kind of see that the veggies look slightly overcooked because the rosemary is kind of burnt. 
but as long as you use a normal setting on your oven, this should come out really good. And it's such a simple yet healthy meal to make. Then I drank the tea from my tea calendar and it was pretty nice. The addition of honey was very, very nice. The chocolate was much of flavors, but I don't think white chocolate is really chocolate. I'm so used to eating dark chocolate, so this only tasted like sugar and fat. I could not taste the matcha. On Wednesday, I had extra time to make breakfast, so I made an oat rice porridge and in Sweden, we eat a lot of rice porridge around Christmas. And on December 13th, we celebrate Lucia, which is the perfect day to have rice porridge. Oat rice is kind of like whole oats and I just followed the recipe on the manufacturer website which was to simmer the oat rice in lots of water and some salt for 10 minutes and then rinse it for 30 seconds and then put it back into the pot and add milk. I added pea milk. I also added a little bit of cardamom just for extra flavor. Then you're supposed to let it simmer on low heat for about an hour. So meanwhile, I prepared the jam that I wanted to put on top. So I added frozen raspberries to a pot and a little bit of frozen blueberries. Then I added one fresh date and I didn't know I covered it, but I cut it up into smaller pieces. I did not add any water, I just let them thaw on the stove for just a few minutes and then they look like this. The porridge usually cooks quicker than an hour, it depends on the consistency you want and I like this consistency. I added a little bit of hemp seeds on top and I see so many shells. Yuck. Then I added the jam and pea milk and cinnamon. A very, very tasty breakfast. also had a banana. Don't be too surprised. For lunch, I had the same thing as I had for dinner on Tuesday, but I did not feel like making the tahini sauce, so I just had avocado. Saffron is also a big thing for Lucia Day, so I had one of my healthy no-bake saffron squares I made in a previous video and my gingerbread cookies. I will link both recipes below. I also had today's chocolate, which was gingerbread flavor. Not the best flavor for chocolate. I forgot to mention that this calendar gives you two chocolates so you can share, but I don't really want to share, so I get two. I feel like this video is filled with my recipes, but this week I was tired and I felt too lazy to figure out what to eat, so it felt easy to just go back to my own recipes. Every week is different. But this recipe is my super simple vegan bean burgers, which I will link below. It is so quick and easy, but yet so tasty. It contains kidney beans or any beans you want, really rolled oats, sunflower seeds, tomato paste, soy sauce, onion and garlic powder, salt and pepper. So you just need to throw everything into a blender and blend it into a dough or batter. I also like to mix it around with a spoon to ensure that everything is evenly combined. But if you have a really good blender, you may not need to do this. 
And this batter is very shapeable, but I like to make the burger shape with a cookie cutter. You can fry the burgers in a pan, but guess what? I was too lazy and I was gonna roast potatoes anyways, so yeah. And I realized while doing this that I needed to move the burgers to the side to actually make place for the potatoes so that I could do everything on just one baking tray. I seasoned the potatoes with sea salt and dried rosemary. Very simple, but actually really good. I cooked everything at 200 degrees celsius for 30 minutes on a normal setting this time. Once they were done, the burgers looked like they were from the desert, but yeah, I actually think you're supposed to bake them at 180 degrees. Check the recipe and you will see. But also, if you fry them, they won't uh, look like this, but actually they are not as dry as they look. I also dipped them in ketchup, so... Yeah, and I didn't know what vegetables to have, so I just cooked some frozen green beans and also a mix of green peas, corn, and bell pepper really quick. I also had half of an avocado for the healthy fats to nourish my skin. And then I had the unsweetened ketchup, which technically isn't unsweetened. They just use starch instead of sugar. Food companies really try to trick you, but yeah, I guess it's still better than sugar. The tea I got in my tea calendar I have tried before and it's great for bloating. And don't forget to brush your teeth tonight because oral hygiene is also important for your health. On Thursday, I had oatmeal for breakfast again and a banana. For lunch, I had the burgers and potatoes again, but with grated carrots instead of the other stuff because I wanted to have time for a walk during my lunch before my meeting, so I didn't have time for anything else. This is what my chocolate calendar looked like in full, and as you may have guessed, I also had my daily chocolate. This day it's just said light, which I assume is like milk chocolate, although this calendar is dairy free. Um, it tasted kind of dark though, but it was nice. For my snack, I had a saffron square again and two gingerbread cookie dough bites. For dinner, I made a creamy orzo dish that I made in one of my first videos on this channel. It's super quick and easy, so it was perfect for my lazy mood. I will link the recipe below. Anyways, I started by adding red onion and garlic to a pot, and I let that cook for a while before adding dried basil and tomato paste. <laughs> Then I added in the orzo. And water. Then I added the frozen green beans. And uh, yeah, after that, I also added in pea milk. Then you want to let that cook for 10 minutes while stirring to ensure that the orzo doesn't stick to the pot. I also remembered that I forgot to add salt and pepper earlier, so I did that. And after a while, I added sun-dried tomatoes and I also added frozen kale for extra nutrition. It's not included in the original recipe, but yeah, you can add it if you want. You can also add a nutritional yeast as it says in the recipe, but I didn't. Once the orzo absorbs more liquid, it will become thick and creamy like this. And right before serving, I added a splash of lemon juice. You can also salt and pepper to taste, but I didn't feel like I needed to. I 
actually sprinkle the nutritional yeast on top instead of adding it to the dish. You can do however you want. I also had a grated carrot again. I was gonna have avocado as well, but all of the ones I had at home were rock hard, so I couldn't. You can also add roasted chickpeas or something else for more protein. I was just too lazy to do more than this. After dinner, I had a protein bar. My advent calendar tea this day was sweet licorice and cinnamon with a bit of cacao, so it tasted really nice. On Friday, I wanted avocado toast, but then I remembered that I didn't have any proper avocados at home, so I had oatmeal again, but with warm blueberries. I also had an apple, which I suppose I forgot to film. Today's flavor in my chocolate calendar was coffee, and I usually don't like coffee-flavored chocolate, but this one was kind of nice. For lunch, I had leftovers like usual and still no avocado, but the portion was a bit smaller today, so I also had two crisp breads with butter. For my snack, I had a chocolate protein smoothie, and it really doesn't look appetizing in this lighting, but it's good, I swear. And in it, there is one banana, raw cacao powder, hemp protein powder, cinnamon, and pea milk because we need some type of liquid. And I just topped it with some pumpkin seeds as you could see. For my dinner, I had a black bean taco with avocado, black beans with taco seasoning, bell pepper, corn, cucumber, lettuce, and Greek yogurt. As I've said before, I'm not vegan, I just eat predominantly plant-based. I also had two gingerbread cookie dough bites because I needed space in the freezer and these were the only ones I had left. And today's tea was fennel tea. Apparently, I missed to drink this after lunch, but after dinner is fine. And that's all I ate this week. It was a lazy week and my appetite was actually quite low, but I hope you still enjoyed the video and got some meal inspiration. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps me out. And Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.